Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at motion time graphs. Now, most of this should be recapped from National 5 and higher level, so let's get started. It says here that on a motion time graph, we saw at higher level that the gradient of the line and the area under the line have a physical significance, and you also saw this at National 5 level. However, because you're now advanced higher students and you hopefully have higher maths under your belt, then you already know how powerful the calculus techniques differentiation and integration have been to analysing the motion of an object. So we can actually extend what we've seen at National 5 and higher level for motion time graphs to thinking about differentiation and integration now. So the gradient of a curve or a straight line on a motion time graph represents instantaneous rate of change and can be found by differentiation, whereas the area under a line on a graph can be found by integration. So for displacement time graphs, first of all, it says that the gradient of a curve or a straight line on a displacement time graph gives the instantaneous velocity. And that is because we've already seen this expression, v equals ds by dt. So that's your differentiation there. The area under a displacement time graph, however, has no meaning. Next, for velocity time graphs, it says that the gradient of a curve or a straight line on a velocity time graph gives the instantaneous acceleration. And that's because we've already seen acceleration expressed in this form here with the differential, so a equals dv by dt. The area under a velocity time graph between limits gives the displacement, and this is shown with the integration here. So the integral of v dt is equal to the integral of ds by dt dt equals s. So that is just saying that the integral of the velocity with respect to time is equal to the displacement. And lastly, for acceleration time graphs, it says that the gradient of a curve or a straight line on an acceleration time graph has no meaning whereas the area under an acceleration time graph between limits gives the change in velocity. And again, we saw this at National 5 and higher level. So this can be shown with an integration. So the integral of a dt is equal to the integral of dv by dt dt, which is equal to delta v. Or in other words, the integral of the acceleration with respect to time is equal to the change in velocity. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.